And joining me now is Dr. Michael Osterholm. He is the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. And I want to begin, uh, Dr. Osterholm, with, with you to respond to something Dr. Burke said earlier on the show. She essentially seemed to imply that we can't ramp up testing as we know it and that the only way we're going to solve our testing problem is with essentially a breakthrough. Uh, is she right? Is that throwing in the towel on testing too early? Well, she's partially right, but let's just be really clear. There are three major problems with testing right now. One, we don't have the reagents. Our government is not working with private sector companies, as all the other governments of the world are now seeking testing to understand how to best ramp up these reagents that we do need. Number two is we have the wild, wild west for testing right now. The FDA has all but given up its oversight responsibility for the tests we have on the market. Many of them are nothing short of a disaster. And we, we got into that place because of the fact once CDC had a problem, the FDA just opened the gate, and we have a lot of bad tests on the market right now. The third thing is these tests just don't perform well in low prevalent populations, meaning that right now if you were to test for antibody in most places in the United States, over half the tests would be false positives. So what we need is a major new initiative on testing that gets away from every day just saying how many people got tested. We're missing the mark in a big way right now. Uh, is this, given what we have now, I mean, it sounds like, it, does, the, does the federal government, does the president need to use this Defense Production Act in order to force these private companies to make these reagents? Well, that's part of the answer, but remember, the whole world wants these reagents right now. It's just not the United States. And so we're competing against the world. What we haven't done is really uh, just been clear with the uh, public or with, in many cases, the people who are making these tests, what we want. You know, there's just far too much happy talk. There is not enough, what do we need? What is it going to take to get us there, and how are we going to do it? And so even today, it's all about excuses about what we're doing for testing or not. Where is our strategic plan that lays out why we're going to use the test, how we're going to use the test, when will it be available? And we don't have that. Lay out the next 12 months. You've been, you've been basically a reality check for a lot of us over the last couple of weeks on, as you just po called it, happy talk. So Vice President Pence said this is going to be behind us largely by Memorial Day. Uh, my initial instinct was Memorial Day 2021 or 2020. What is your instinct? Well, first of all, let's just take the numbers. At most, 5 to 15 percent of the United States has been infected to date. With all the experience we've had so far, this virus is going to keep transmitting. It's going to keep trying to find humans to do what it does until we get at least 60 or 70 percent of the people infected. That's what it'll take to get herd immunity. You know, Chuck, we're in the very earliest days of this situation right now. You know, if I could just briefly say one uh, story here. Right after 9-11, I spent a number of days up at your studios doing filming around the mm -hmm. issue of what was happening. And your late, your, the predecessor here, uh, the late Tim Russert, used to say to me all the time, hi, Doc, how you doing? Is the big one here yet? And I would always say, no, Tim, it's not. If he asked me today, is the big one here or is it coming? I would say, Tim, this yeah. is the big one. And it's going to be here for the next 16 to 18 months. And people don't get that yet. We're just on the very first stages. When I hear New York talking about the fact they're down on the backside of the mountain, I know they've been through hell. And, it's, and, and that's an important right. statement. But they have to understand that's not the mountain. That's the foothills. They have mountains to go yet. Right. We have a lot of people to get infected before this is over. Vaccine or herd immunity, what's more likely? Uh, well, herd immunity uh, is clearly going to happen if we don't have a vaccine. I do think that we have a better chance of a vaccine than some. The statement that came out yesterday from the World Health Organization suggesting there may not be immunity was misinterpreted to mean that we don't have evidence today that you are protected uh, from humans. But we have actually animal model data, monkeys that have been infected intentionally and then rechallenged that were protected. We have a new study on Friday that said vaccine protected them. So I think we're going to have it. I just don't think it's going to be soon. And we're in virus time right now and not human time. And so what we can get done in the next 16 <laughs> to 18 months, that's great. But if we don't, we won't have a vaccine in time to protect most of the people right. in the world. Dr. Osterholm, thank you for coming on uh, and giving us your expertise and, frankly, a bit of a thank timeline you. reality check. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here 
to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.